Well, looky here. Yep, that's what a couple of mud rods will do. Let's go ahead and get this fork seal replaced. All right, we got the bike all cleaned up. This is a 21 CRF 250R. My son's riding and, and racing it right now. First thing you want to do is loosen up these 10 millimeter bolts and take your fork cap removal tool and loosen up the fork cap. But on this bike right here, I cannot get the fork cap tool uh, in here because of the uh, handlebar clamps. So what I'm going to do is uh, drop the fork down a little bit and um, then I'll be able to loosen up the fork cap. Just get the fork cap loose there. Don't take it all the way off, just, just break it loose. Just like that. Let's go ahead and get the fork guard off. that aside. Alright, before we go any further, we want to wipe this down and get it nice and clean. Now would be a good time to go ahead and loosen up your rebound and compression clickers all the way out and record the setting. With that done, we can loosen up the fork cap completely. This outer tube will slide down and you can drain the oil into an oil pan. Now go ahead and get your fork in a vise uh, with soft jaws and clamp it in a place where it's not going to damage the tube. Go ahead and break loose the center bolt. I like to use an impact, 21 millimeter. Temporarily install the fork cap assembly to the upper tube. Go ahead and push the whole fork assembly forward. This is going to allow you to insert the fork holding tool. If you don't have a fork holding tool, a 14 millimeter will work. With the fork holding tool holding everything in place, you can now break the center bolt loose from the inner rod with a 17 millimeter on this back knot, back nut, and a 21 on your center bolt. Center bolt comes out. Go ahead and pull this, uh, your rebound needle out. Set that to the side. Okay, now very carefully, we want to remove the fork holding tool and allow the inner rod to go back up inside the fork. Be careful when you do this because there's threads down inside. You don't want to booger up those threads. So push that back. That go back in easy. Now you can go ahead and loosen up your top uh, fork cap. Alright, you can now go ahead and pull out the inner cartridge. There's like this washer or bushing that comes out next. And this part right here and then you spring. Just so you don't get things mixed up, this is how this piece and assembly goes right here. Okay? So you got this bright metal washer bushing, slides up to here, a thinner dark washer, it slides up to there and then this cone piece that's how that goes 
And while you got the cartridge assembly out, be a good time to check it. This rod, once you want it to be able to push it in, and it spring back out on you. Use a small, thin blade screwdriver, flathead, pull your dust wiper down. Just insert it into the side, twist it. By pulling that dust wiper down, that's going to expose a retaining ring right here that you'll have to be very careful with. Take a small screwdriver and pry it up and out. Try to be careful not to scratch the inner tube here. Now we can separate the inner and outer tubes. You want to use a good hard pull to separate the seal and the bushings from the inner and outer tube. Just like that. You can go ahead and remove the bushings here and the seal. Just be mindful of the direction that everything is facing and the way the seal is facing and the order of everything. Go ahead and examine your lower tube. Look for any nicks or scratches. Clean it up real good. And uh, we'll be ready to put the seal in. Okay, so I made a goof. Um, I thought I had uh, a seal in stock, but I didn't. So I had to wait a few days for a seal to come in right here. I like to use the OEM seals or uh, SKS. So let's go ahead and get them installed. What you want to do is you want to grab a seal bullet. I like to use these. Just makes the installation go real easy. You can use uh, electrical tape or saran wrap, but uh, if you have one of these, it makes it a lot easier. Let's go ahead and put that on. Lube everything up with some pork oil. First thing that goes on is your dust wiper. You want this spring to be facing down. Next is your oil seal. You want the spring to be facing up. Slide that on. Go ahead and take your seal bullet off. All right, metal washer goes next. And then this bushing with the coating on the inner side goes next. And then this bushing with the coating on the outside goes next. Fits right here. Don't forget your sir clip between the dust wiper and the oil seal. Now we're ready to insert the inner tube into the outer tube. And slide your oil seal down. Then we're going to take our seal driver and drive this oil seal down in there. Get your seal driver. Okay, you're going to want to hammer this on down in there, and you'll know when it's seated. You'll hear a, a, almost like a metallic tink. Right there. With the oil seal seated fully, that exposes a groove down in 
side here where your clip goes. So that's going to allow us to go ahead and reinstall the clip. Make sure the clip seats fully. All right, I like to put a little fork oil around the dust wiper here. And we'll press that on down in there. Go ahead and run this stop nut all the way back. The manual says you need to have between 11 and 12 millimeters right here. And I've got 12 millimeters. We go ahead and put our spring back down on our fork. And put your cartridge back in. Now you can go ahead and temporarily tighten your fork cap back up. We can now push in and get our fork holding tool back on the stopper nut. Go ahead and install your rebound needle. When you put this in, you need to make sure it fully seats because it'll stick out a little bit if it's not in the correct position. And then when you find the correct position, it'll slide back in just like that. And then make sure the flat piece on your center bolt goes against the flat piece on your rebound needle. With your center bolt fully seated, take a 17 millimeter on this back stopper nut and run it up to the center bolt until it stops. The stopper nut ran up, hold the stopper nut, back nut again with a 17 millimeter and use a 21 millimeter and torque the center bolt to the, the inner rod at 21 foot pounds. Remove the stopper tool and let the inner rod go back up into the fork tube. the center bolt to the lower tube at 51 foot-pounds. Go ahead and remove your fork cap again so we can drop this upper tube and add the oil. Standard fork oil capacity is going to be 11.6 US ounces. I've been using the Maxima 5 weight fork oil. Now just pour it in. Now go ahead and install your fork cap back to the outer tube again. And you'll do the final torquing while the fork's on the bike. Go ahead and inspect your work, make sure there's no leaks. Okay, it's on. I forgot to show the tightening technique. I, I just basically run the fork up to here because remember I can't get the fork cap into there. I just give it a good good twist, give it a good snug. I don't have any way of tor torquing it down, but uh, that's how we do it. All right, thanks for watching.